Hello again, this is Donna Warren at the University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point, and I am here to talk to you some more about argument mapping. Last time, we saw this map. And the point of the discussion last time was to introduce you to the basics of argument mapping. This is a reason, right? This is the conclusion, and this is an inference. This is the first of three ways that two ideas can be related to each other, just as reason and conclusion. What I'd like to do today is talk about the second of those three ways. And another visual aid, here it is. This is the second of the three ways that arguments can be related to each other. As you can see, we have more than one idea on the top here. That means we have more than one reason. Because there's a plus there, we know that they need to work together in order to establish the conclusion. So we call them dependent reasons. They are dependent on each other in sort of what I sometimes call the piano mover sense. This guy can't move the piano by himself. This guy can't move the piano by himself. But together, they can move the piano. They can prove the ultimate conclusion. Um, this is one of my favorite relationships, actually. It's incredibly powerful, but sometimes it is difficult to know when two ideas should be related with a plus and when they should be related with an arrow like this. So here's one way to tell. I call this the puzzle piece test. This is a very sophisticated visual aid because I will be putting on two post-it notes. Here's the first set of post-it notes. There. Imagine putting together two puzzle pieces like this. Now what I would like you to do is just visualize what shape you're going to get when you put these two things together. Okay? Visualize it. Have it in your head. This is what I think you'll get. That. That little anvil-like shape, right? Now, if I were to ask you, what happens to the circle? Because I can understand the square jutting out is here, and the triangle jutting out is here, but here we have these, these circles. What happened to them? The answer, of course, is they sort of disappeared because they were what's in common. They're sort of here, but they don't show up visibly in the final shape outline. Same thing happens with ideas. So now I'm going to put on the second set of um, post-it notes. This is the example, actually, that we've already seen before about my neighbor being home. And the reason that I know this is that their dog is outside, and that only happens when they're at home, like this. Okay? Here's the argument. Um, the dog is outside. The dog is, um, the dog is not outside when my neighbors are gone. Therefore, my neighbors must be at home. Now, think about the puzzle piece test. What is analogous to the circle? What's analogous to the circle are the concepts that each reason has in common, right? So if we look at these reasons, what do they have in common? What are they both talking about? Well, they're talking about the dog being outside. Sorry about that. They're talking about the dog being outside, right? So that's going to be um, the common part that will not appear. It's like the circle. It won't appear down here. So if we take that away from both reasons, well, that means we take this away completely. If we take that away from here, what do we have? Well, what's left over? We imagine scratching it out. The dog is outside. Well, what we don't have here is the word not, so we're going to keep that word not. That sticks around. And um, neighbor is gone. So if we put those two ideas together, neighbor is gone, not. What's left? My neighbor's at home. That puzzle piece test is really quite powerful because we'll be using it later on to, um, among other things, retrofit missing pieces. I'm just going to take these away so you can imagine how this could work. Suppose that um, we don't have the conclusion. You could figure out what the conclusion is 
just putting these two things together, right? Suppose that we have the conclusion and a reason. You could figure out what this missing reason is, too. So you can use it to fill in missing pieces. It's very, very powerful. Right now, though, we're imagining that we have all of the pieces given to us. So let's think about how we would evaluate an argument like that. Okay. So here's the argument again. When we were evaluating simpler arguments that just had one reason up here in the conclusion, we saw that what we would need to look at are the premises. These are still premises because there's no reason given for them. And the inference. We look at the same things now, nothing new. And because these ideas are added together, they both need to be good. Think about it. If this isn't here, this guy can't move the piano by himself, so he's not going to get this, right? And the other way around, too. So um, we ask, is this true? Is this true? If one of those is false, it's a bad argument, even one. Then, if they're both true, we could take a look at the inference and ask, if this is true, and if this is true, how likely is this to be true? Or if someone believed this, and if someone believed this, how likely would they be to believe this? The same sort of evaluation procedure obtains here as obtained before, nothing new. Let's think about how we might express this in prose. If we use a conclusion indicator, I might say, um, the dog is outside, and sometimes this, this plus is an and, the dog is not outside, when the neighbor is gone, therefore, reason indicator, conclusion indicator expression, my neighbor is at home, right? So this and this, therefore this. I could also use but. Um, the dog is outside, but the dog isn't outside when the neighbors are gone, therefore, my neighbor must be at home. I could use either and or but for the plus. And that's using a conclusion indicator expression going down. We could also write this or speak this using a reason indicator going up. So I would say this first. I would say, my neighbor is at home because the dog is outside and because the dog is not outside, not outside when the neighbors are gone. Note that expression. This, because, this, and because that. The because and because expression is usually a diagram like this. Um, now, you might wonder, could I have more than two ideas added up there? Could I have three ideas added? Could I have four ideas added? In principle, yes. In practice, no, with a couple of exceptions. Um, but that is a discussion for another time. I hope you enjoyed meeting my friend. I hope you like the puzzle piece technique. It's incredibly powerful. I like it a lot. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.